Hello everybody, welcome to Random Quick Draw. I am your host, Josh Hendry, and this is the show that is randomly fast and vastly random where we take four different items from the roll of a dice and do a drawing or an illustration from it. So if you're there at home or in your uh, own place where you'd like to draw, please feel free to draw along. Uh, let's see what we got tonight. I rolled it a little bit earlier uh, <clears throat> this evening. We're going to be drawing a dinosaur 3D printing uh, with a bicycle and a bathroom. So, <laughs> uh, it'll be cool to see uh, what we get with that. I'm going to go ahead and write these down. Again, uh, when this is completed, I will scan it in and make a vector kind of art version of it that you can download and color. And anybody who decides to color it, uh, feel free to upload that and we'll just post it in the coloring gallery. If you'd like to play along with the actual sheet, uh, this format sheet that I'm using, uh, please feel free to join our email list and you'll get uh, this uh, PDF and then also the list that I'm drawing from currently. Uh, I shake it up from time to time so the list does change, uh, but this is the one I'm using for season two. And let's see. All right, dinosaur printing, 3D printing, a uh, bicycle. Yeah. And a bathroom. That's pretty interesting. All right. <clears throat> well, I guess the obvious thing to start with is a dinosaur. Uh, and I'm thinking T Rex is what I'm thinking. So I don't know. Why 3D printing in a bathroom? That's hard to figure out. Mm. <sighs> <clears throat> yeah. Three D printing bicycles in a bathtub. Not a bathtub, but a bathroom. But I'm thinking bath tub. Man, this is a challenge. Dinosaur. Start with the head. I don't know why I always start with a circle for the head, but I do. <laughs> and I'm just kind of coming up with some random style of dinosaur. I realize that there are lots of different styles. <laughs> uh, which... You know, I think off the top of my head, if I had to pick a favorite dinosaur that I've ever had, I would probably pick Yoshi uh, from Super Mario Brothers. Uh, although there might be other cool dinosaurs out there, I loved, I was around when Super Mario Brothers 2 came out, and Yoshi was one of the characters in there, and I have very fond memories of playing that game and finding all the secret shortcuts and that kind of stuff, so... Um, yeah, that was just a little, that one's a nostalgic dinosaur for me. And, uh, <laughs> but there are lots of dinosaurs out there. Uh, I think of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. And that was a really, um, at the time, was just a really amazing 3D animated, computer generated um, thing. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Jurassic Park came out when I was in college. And I was at uh, NC State University at the time. And we got a Maya lab my senior year as I was about to graduate. And for those of you who don't know, Maya at the time was what they had done Toy Story with. And Jurassic Park, I think, was done with Maya. Uh, but it was, when I was graduating, that was just really becoming a major thing and we we were really excited to have a lab with Maya in it but it was sort of at the end of my career so I did not really get into it or gravitate to it that much I felt like I had already uh, kind of spent my time in college learning a skill set and that, that wasn't uh, that wasn't going to be part of it I didn't feel like I could get all of that and, at the time but I tell you one thing that I've always loved to do, obviously one of the reasons why I'm doing this show is I love storytelling and I love illustrating. Um, so that's just one of my 
Uh, one of my passions is just drawing and putting personality in the drawings. And uh, let's see. What kind of dinosaur wants to be 3D printing bicycles? I'm trying to think, is there any kind of bathroom that I can imagine that would accommodate a dinosaur for some reason? Now, maybe this dinosaur is in a pool, maybe? Not a pool, but a bathtub. No, I'm drawing a bathtub. <laughs> How's the 3D printer going to work? I don't like the idea of electricity and water being that close to each other. <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, so then there's probably going to be a bubble bath because that makes sense <clears throat> if you're in a bathroom. <clears throat> Maybe that makes sense. Now the good thing about 3D printing is you usually just get to set it and forget it. And you come back later. So maybe um, my man is, my man, my dinosaur, maybe my dinosaur is got a little back scrubber brush. Maybe. Back scrubber brush. Well, let me be like this, right? I don't know. I drew the head so big, it's kind of hard to then do one of these numbers unless it were with this arm. Move my fingers this way. T-Rex fingers, don't you know? Does that register? I don't know if that even registers. Like, I don't know if that looks visually like it's a a back scratching whatever scrubber brush. It seems really confusing visually. So maybe he's not doing that. Maybe there's a rubber ducky in the water with him. I'm jacked up duck. I'm thinking maybe there's a mess. Maybe the water is running over because it's a dinosaur. <clears throat> Nobody expects a dinosaur to be neat in the bathtub or the bathroom. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, we want it to be realistic. So... Alright, you need to find the center of a rectangle. What do you do? You draw an X. Alright, so maybe you draw one of these little knobs on there. Old school. And maybe it's got one of these little faucets coming out. Is that tall enough? I kind of get the feeling that should be taller up, higher up. Higher up, taller up. And then the faucet's coming out right about there. 
that make sense? That seems to make sense right there. Pretty cool, I guess. And then they usually got one of these little thingies for the shower. And then you got this little knobby knob that comes out like so. I feel like I'm dating myself with my faucet style. I feel like these are probably no longer the norm. But yeah, that's what I'm going with, man. The big faucet handle that looks like a diamond or a crystal. All right, that water is running and splashing and spilling out over and there are bubbles on the ground all right so we are getting there with the dinosaur and the bathroom sort of vibe let's see we'll run a, a high level of tile around the tub i guess maybe Maybe it's a three wall, but where is the 3D printer going, man? There would be a, a table here. A little table thing. It'd probably be higher than the bathtub, I would guess. There's got to be 3D printer here. I don't know guys I'm not sure about this one I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out my friends we may have uh, may have really done it this time now I gotta think about my 3D printer and what style it is I only know a handful of styles of printers I don't know that many so my shape language or the the shapes that I can choose from from memory are somewhat limited and on top of that I've never drawn them from observation so that makes it equally challenging but I know there's a, a bed I know there's cross pieces the bed usually goes this way that way uh, this usually has some kind of threading to raise and lower it. Usually this is got two supports on either side to keep that bar good across there. Mm hmm. Maybe that's good. And then I usually got this little printer thing on my bobber, the heating element with the fans and the housing. You got the little nozzle that's down, and you got the filament running into the heating element. I know some of this stuff. Then you usually got a roll of filament hanging out up here somewhere. Yeah, something like that. Sure, that's kind of close to what a 3D printer looks like, I guess. Maybe. Now we need a little bicycle on here because it's going to be 3D printing a bicycle. Yeah, bicycles are like really easy to draw without photo reference. Psht. No problem. Yeah. That looks so much like a bicycle, it's ridiculous. Just like a bicycle. Well, I'm sure there's like little pedals or something on there. Now, I do like mountain biking. That's something I grew up doing. So, one of those things I just really have a fondness for another one of those great memories from my childhood of just having a bike and being able to tool around. Um, 
growing up in the mountains of North Carolina, there were always trails to ride. And, um, it was just an exciting, exciting place to grow up, for sure. Although, as much as I loved growing up in North Carolina, I definitely missed Florida as well because that's where I was born. And I am a fan of the warm weather and I love the beach. Love the beach. I enjoy trying to surf. <laughs> I can't surf. I can, I at one point could kind of skateboard and I can snowboard uh, but I have I don't think I've ever stood up on a surfboard for more than a couple of seconds it's just a whole different animal trying to get up on a board that's wobbling like that but it's awesome to watch people do it and I always have enjoyed just getting out in the water Yeah, this one doesn't feel super lively for some reason. It doesn't feel like it's got enough. I like the water pouring out the dinosaur and the bathtub. All that's really good. And 3D printing, man, it's like, if I'm going to have this on the list, I need to know how to draw some 3D printer, man. This is not... I'm drawing what I can remember of the Ender 3 because that's the one I'm most familiar with. Um... I also have a mono price, and it's more of like a box. It's not quite as, uh, I guess, interesting to look at as far as for shapes and things. But the other thing about the Ender is it's almost all black, and so there's it's like I don't pay attention quite as much to all the little shapes. I guess it just sort of all just I just know it's there. And <laughs> I put it together so I sort of know how it works and I feel like I'm always trying to repair it. Um, so 3D printing is one of those things that I, I uh, gotten into at a very introductory level and it just seems like there's so many things to maintain and keep track of and make sure they're working right. Like I changed the thermistor on my Ender 3, I've changed the filament uh, tubing that where the filament feeds through to a higher temperature uh, rated tubing. I've changed the print nozzle. I've changed the bed uh, for the, the surface of the bed. Um, I've just done a lot and still uh, I'm having trouble uh, getting the filament to feed through. I get it I'll, even doing it almost at its hottest setting to get the filament to melt enough to push it through the tube but it just won't push through and I've cleaned the nozzle multiple times, so it just has provided a lot of challenges. And um, I know that the Ender is kind of the entry level, sort of not super expensive, but still, I feel like I should have gotten more use out of it than I have. Uh, but I've had it for a long time now. I actually use it at my school. Um, they actually purchased it for the art department so that's kind of how I've gotten to familiar with it um, so, but we uh, our middle school art program our, our focus group those are the ones that are, are really uh, taking art seriously at, at least at the middle school level we're doing a marble roller coaster project um, and one of the things that we developed after 3d printing came out was uh, coaster clips. So I've done this project for years and years and years. In fact, it's actually a throwback to my freshman year at NC State at the design school there. Uh, it was a project we had, and I love the project so much that um, when I got to teach art, I wanted others to experience it. I wanted my students to experience it. So as soon as I felt like, you know, I was working with a group that was uh, Kind of would enjoy doing it and would it would challenge them in a good way we we created it created the project uh, for them and 
been doing it for over 12 years now, maybe close to 13, I guess 2010, yeah, this will be my 13th year doing it. And when we first started doing it, 3D printing was not anywhere near as popular as it is now, and so it wasn't even a consideration. But now we use the 3D printer to print coaster clips, and the clips actually hold the track together um, at the perfect distance for the steel ball bearing to travel down. And uh, it's actually made the project a lot easier, a lot more enjoyable, and also uh, allowed students to focus a lot more on how creative they can be with the design of their coaster because they're not worried about how they're going to attach wire to a track and not interfere with the ball and this and that. It just makes the process a whole lot better. Um, so it's actually really cool, very cool project. Uh, and the way we run it, we actually do it as a business uh, lesson as well. So they, they come up with a design theme for their coaster, something that will be fun uh, to ride and to work on and visually uh, appealing. And then we give them $500 of play money <laughs> and keep a ledger for them. And so they have to buy all their materials and supplies for their coaster. And uh, of course, all the supplies are already there. They're just kind of buying them at a set price. and. They have $500 as their starting budget. Um, and then within the economy, we call it the economy, our class, they can do work for each other and they can sell things. So if they want to buy something in bulk and then sell it at a higher rate to other uh, classmates or whatever, we allow all those kind of things. They can hire themselves out to do particular jobs for people. Like if somebody's really good at drawing or designing a you know, cool, I guess, signage for the roller coaster or something like that. They might hire themselves out for a class and make some money that way. So um, it's kind of a cool thing. But the culminating event is for the whole school, and we have over 700 kids at our school. And so we have 30 kids in this focus group, and those 30 kids are going to be in the gym with their marble roller coasters, and all day long students will be able to come in by grade level and ride their roller coasters. And so each time a person rides their roller coaster, that's worth $5. And so they see if they can make their money back on the day of the event. And, uh, you know, if they have a roller coaster that's operational uh, and can endure the whole day, they can actually do quite well. Um, and I think that's a, what's really cool about it from an art teacher perspective is it really makes them respect the supplies and the materials. You don't see people wasting things. We actually have a recycle bin where people can go and kind of dumpster dive for supplies that have been, uh, they can salvage and make use of supplies. So there's a lot of good lessons there about conserving resources and being smart and then just thinking financially. I mean, it's, uh, I hate to say it, but we had a student who went into debt, right, in the process of building their coaster. And once you're in debt, you cannot purchase anything you know, in, in the economy anymore. But this student has spent two classes working their way out of debt. And uh, I have a little experience with debt in my life or have had, and it was a long road to get out of it. Um, and so I think that that's something that's extremely valuable uh, for, for young people to, to learn early on. Uh, debt is, is, uh, can be used uh, uh, and if, if you are, if you understand the risks and all of those things, you know, that they can be, I personally did not understand the risks when I started to accrue debt and it was a, a, a very big wake up call, uh, for me. And so, uh, you know, my road was one that was very difficult. And if I can save my students any of that trouble or save my my family any of that trouble uh, I certainly will and that's one of the reasons I put that in this project and trying to help them out uh, with that and then just also being business savvy recognizing that you know you even a creative person has to answer to somebody right if, if their coaster is not attractive or not appealing or not fun uh, no matter how much they love it or think that it's great there's going to be somebody else uh, that has something to say about it, and that somebody else uh, is going to be the one who's either going to be excited to ride or is going to dismiss <laughs> dismiss it and not ride it. And so um, it's helpful.
for us to think about our skills and our gifts, I think, as not just being for ourselves, but for how they may benefit the larger community. So I think that's one of the things that hopefully that's one of the things the students get out of it. Still trying to get this. Uh, trying to get this right where he's scrubbing his back here. I'm gonna be right there. It just doesn't look right. I guess maybe if his arm were out further. Gosh, it just does not look right. But anyway, maybe he's just gonna be playing with the rubber ducky. I don't know. I don't know why I put him in water since he's got he's printing bicycles. I don't know what bicycles have to do with water except for. Maybe it's a Red Bull event. <laughs> They're riding bicycles off into the water. I don't know. What is that event called? Oh. I feel like it's right on the tip of my tongue. I've watched some of them recently. Anyway. Red Bull does this hilarious event. I'm sure you're aware of it. Where people design things that are supposed to fly. And they drive them off of this huge pier over the water. And they fly for a little ways. <laughs> and then they crash into the water. And a lot of times the bicycles are part of the apparatus. And they go flying off the end of the pier. I could do that right here. They could be flying off the end of the pier or something. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe he's just going to be holding some shampoo. I mean... Dinosaurs don't really need shampoo. I gotta say. Not many hairy dinosaurs in the world that I've heard of. Maybe it's just some body wash. Maybe it's some soap suds. Maybe? Maybe it's some bath wash you know a bunch of bubbles floating up because it's just getting out of hand maybe that's what's going on well why is a bicycle why does he need a bicycle I don't know why does he need 3D printed bicycles that's an even better question I'm not sure oh I had something really cool happen uh, in my second grade art class a couple of weeks ago we were looking at, we were comparing two pieces of artwork, and I'm going to, I'm going to totally not get these names pronounced correctly, but Albert Durer, I guess, I thought it was Durer, and then one of my students was like, no, it's Durer, so maybe Durer is right, but Albert Durer, who is extremely uh, realistic in his approach, uh, painted a hare or a rabbit. And so we were looking at that, and we were comparing and contrasting that with Paul Clay's Cat and Bird. And Paul Clay's Cat and Bird is an abstract piece of art. And true confessions, I have not typically been a big fan of abstract art in the past. Um, I think it just, there was something about it, and probably my own pride and arrogance led me to think of it as... Uh, a cop out maybe maybe that's the way I thought about it of like oh come on you're just putting paint on the canvas so we're sitting here in my with my second graders we're talking about these pieces of artwork and uh, one of my students asked about Paul Clay's cat and bird why is the bird painted the same color as the cat's nose and if you've seen his work the cat's nose is a pink heart and then the bird is on his forehead and we talked about how why why do you think uh, Paul put a bird on the cat's forehead and the kids were keen on this they got it right away they said well he's probably thinking about a bird because he wants to catch it I was like yeah he had a bird on the mind but then when the student asked me why is the color of the bird the same as his nose you know we talked about it in class and I it made me think, well, maybe it's a way of describing that he can already smell the bird or he, he's picking up 
the scent of the bird, and so he wants that to be associated with the nose. And so then we flipped back over, because I have both slides up on a projector. We flipped back over to Albert Durer's hair, and all of a sudden it dawned on me that, and I'm sorry if this is, like, you probably already know this, but it was a revelation to me. Realistic artwork is meant to catch the outside, capture the outside with all the details and surface, and abstract art is attempting to relate things that you can't see. So thoughts, um, feelings, emotions, uh, and I thought all of a sudden, wow, cat and bird is not at all trying to capture, obviously, what the cat looks like, even though you can tell it's a cat. Um, it's trying to do something that is so abstract. And then all of a sudden, I grew in my appreciation for abstract art because I have to think, well, what is more challenging, to draw something I can see or something I can't see? And, um, yeah, it was just really cool. And I was so encouraged that that came that that came about with my second grade class and just I was just stoked about that um, and it's just great I mean teaching art is just great getting input and feedback from um, students seeing their enthusiasm for art and watching them develop their skills and have aha moments and then having my own aha moments and um, yeah it's just been been very very enjoyable and rewarding so I really I enjoy teaching art I enjoy passing on the things that I've learned I've had some absolutely phenomenal teachers in my time uh, and I just am grateful for the things that they showed me I'm grateful for uh, the way they took time uh, to help and invest in me. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can do that too. Hopefully I can help other people who enjoy art, love art, whether they just want to do it for enjoyment and relaxation, whether they would like to improve their skills to try and do it as a profession or as a hobby, um, whatever, however I can help is sort of what I would like to do. So, and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these things. I mean, they're just really random, fun opportunities to be able to draw things and an illustrative style and uh, a challenge for me. Uh, a lot of times when I teach, I don't get to do a, a ton of creative stuff. I do have creative things, and there are definitely commissions that I work on for clients and things like that in my free time. Um, and all of those things are wonderful, but um, this is just sort of an outlet that I... Um, I don't know, I just desired doing it. I thought it would be a lot of fun. I think it would be more fun if more people knew about it, um, but I'm also trying to figure out exactly what this is gonna be. Uh, if this is gonna be something that I can maintain. Uh, I don't wanna go and advertise something that I can't maintain and I can't keep up with, so I'm sort of uh, testing the waters and doing this. So tonight, this just happens to be a Thursday, and my normal night would be Tuesday. Uh, but this past Tuesday was Valentine's Day, and I wanted to spend that time with my family. And, um, you know, family is very important to me, and we work a lot, and my daughter's growing up fast and all of that. So uh, I want to make sure that this is something that is not going to take away from my family or, uh, you know, that it's, it's doable with the other responsibilities I have before I just go out and start telling everybody in the world I'm doing this thing. So, uh, but... There is a website, mrhen.com. You're welcome to go over there. If you sign up, you'll gain access to a bunch of free activities. So if you're a homeschool parent and you're looking for activities for your kid or you just want to uh, grow a little bit, we have everything from free activities to actually uh, a paid art curriculum uh, and some really cool art projects that I'm working on. I've been doing the art projects with students for years, so uh, they are already... They, they exist, they just don't exist on the website yet. So I'm, I'm getting there. Slowly but surely I'm getting there. So
curtains over here. I guess I should start inking at some point. That might be a good idea. I would like to get these tiles worked out. I'm trying to think how big I want these tiles to be. I'm, I'm picturing like those little square tiles for some reason. You know the ones I'm talking about? I tell you, one of the hardest things about doing this is not being able to rotate my picture because that is definitely part of my normal workflow. <laughs> I like to rotate my page to be able to get a similar angle when I'm doing repetitive lines. So like this, when I would normally be doing uh, tile, or I should say I would normally be rotating the page to be doing these tiles because it just makes it so much more precise and quick. But oh well. Man, that ain't happening right now. So, there we go. Yep. I suppose that'll work. Sure, why not? That looks somewhat okay, maybe. I think these tiles need to be up higher, man. They go up. They, I think they're going up to the roof. Yeah, that's what's happening. Oh, there it is. That fell horribly. Oof, that's hard to do without rotating the page. Wow. Well. Like I said, I was looking for a challenge, so I got one. Yahoo. some rough tile work buddy whoever tiled this bathroom probably got another job now because they they didn't do this one right <laughs> that's a that's a pretty bad tile job my friends wow this is a mess of a picture good grief I need some bubbles to save this thing we're about to hide these legs in some bubbles there are bubbles all over this bathroom is how we're solving this one Okay, all the tile problems are going to be bubbles now. Yeah, buddy. Wow, yeah. Okay. That is the only way to solve that problem. Okay. When in doubt, just cover up all your mistakes with bubbles. Okay, that's the, that's the drawing lesson for today, kids. You don't have to be a good artist. You just have to draw circles really fast. All right. Yeah, well, that kind of balances it all out and ties it all in. <laughs> the bubbles. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get a hold of yourself, man. Hmm. All right, so I got a question for you. When you are drawing, what kind of music is your favorite? I would like to know. Comment below. Um, one style that I have really been enjoying uh, starting last year and still into this year is lo-fi chill. And I just go on YouTube and find lo-fi chill. <laughs> and for some reason, that's just got the right it keeps a beat, it keeps, uh, helps to stay focused, but it, the lyrics don't distract, I don't, it's just, a, man, it's, it's fantastic. I, I really am, am, have been enjoying that. So that's one that I can recommend. So if you've got one that you can recommend, it's just great to draw to or paint to or create, uh, let us know. And I always like finding new bands, and I've been out of the scene for a while. Um, so, uh, 
tell you a band that I really, really enjoyed, and then they, they're no longer around, I guess. I don't think uh, they're making music anymore. It's uh, Alabama Shakes. Um, that was just a really, really unique sound and fantastic vocals. And, um, yeah, but they did Austin City Limits and did a couple other things, but I didn't find out about them until they were already done. So I totally missed the whole rise and I don't want to say fall, but when they were gaining in popularity and, and still working, I didn't know anything about them. So I was way behind the curve, which I tend to be on a lot of things. I'm not one of those people who has to go out and get the best gadget or the newest gadget or anything like that. I wait and see um, if it's going to be a, a flop or not, if it's going to be a good product. I wait to hear all the reviews. And I take forever to make decisions. Um, and so at least when it comes to that kind of stuff, like the new technology, I'm always very skeptical. Um, and I tend to, when I find a brand that works, I like, I become very loyal to that brand because I put a high premium on reliability, uh, knowing that it's going to work, uh, the way that I want it to work. And, um, yeah, it just really, that really matters. But I think the same kind of can go with music sometimes is, I don't, it's rare for me to just really get into a band. Um, and when I do get into a band, I, I sometimes I just listen to that band exclusively because I just find their sound so unique or so different or so something that I enjoy. And I like listening to a lot of different things. It's just I won't listen to it over and over and over again unless I just absolutely love it. Um, I don't know if everybody, I don't think everybody's that way. But maybe they are. It just seems like, I don't know. I feel like I'm very picky. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love good music, but I also feel like I'm kind of picky. Uh, I don't like that faucet at all. I think convincingly it's a faucet. That ain't, that ain't convincing me. I wonder if I should do a handle. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up some photo reference for a shower faucet. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Shower faucet. Google's gonna deliver. Yep, got it. That was the other one I was thinking of and I thought it was simple and it is. It looks like a clock handle. There you go. Okay. Cool, I think we're ready to ink this puppy. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe, we'll see. And my pen. I got another one on the way because I love this thing. And if, I mean, I've got some replacements for it, but these, I got a feeling this little brush after a while is going to gonna wear out and so I want to make sure I got another one in the inventory for when it gives out I don't want to have to wait once this one gives out to be able to pick up the next one and go so just ordered that today it's supposed to be here tomorrow it's a pintail and it's a pretty popular brush and I shared earlier in the earlier episodes this season that I still have a long way to go to learn how to use this brush because it is fantastic. And I am very not as fantastic with it as I would like to be. Yippers, yippers. I bet there's a really good way to do circles. What I would like is for the bottom to be thicker than the tops. Like this, where it's all thick on top, that doesn't look like a bubble, it looks like a stone. 
you keep making bubbles, there's really thin lines. And I know you can do it with this pen. Just when you set the pen down, you're going to get a little bit more because as the pen contacts it, also right there, I've got that hiccup in my movement. I don't know if I come from a more vertical position. No, that's not helping at all. That was not the solution I was looking for. Now that works okay, so I'm actually going counterclockwise and that puts the shadow right there as I'm coming back kind of hmm. it's all muscle memory it's all trying to figure it out the more you can figure out the better off it's gonna look Yeah, so whew, I am not a big fan of those tiles. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those. Thinking about using a micron pen for them instead of the brush pen because I think that that might be better. I wonder if the bubbles would be better with a micron pen. I almost feel like they would be. It would at least be a consistent line weight, and I think I like that. I'm not 100%.
other things that I really enjoy teaching is storytelling, the art of storytelling. If you ever get the chance to read uh, The Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell or The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler, I highly recommend both of those books uh, if you're interested in storytelling. Um, they are fantastic resources, and I use uh, what I've learned in those books all the time just to even analyze movies because I'm, I'm not uh, a, a writer so much, um, although I do have a story that I've been working on for quite some time that I've thought, you know, I, I've created one comic book uh, based on the idea, and it Honestly, the story that I told in the comic book is way before the actual story I want to tell, so it's kind of a weird thing. It's not really getting into the meat of what the story is about. It's just laying some background information in there. But um, I use this... The things that they teach are so valuable and so helpful to understand what makes stories uh, compelling. And, um, and there's also a lot of real-life just kind of experience that ties in with that that's so relatable it's why we relate to movies is when they relate in some way to our experience we just tend to connect with them so much and um it's just really cool i i just find it very interesting to study that and pick the great stories that i love apart and just i'm i marvel at great storytellers and um you know great cinema movies and not so much the special effects like it, honestly I think special effects are very secondary to me it's not that I don't enjoy them but if the story's not there I just the special effects just don't really do it for me it's got to be an interesting story and it, it can even be a story about something that I don't particularly have an interest in myself or anything like that uh, but just the story itself is, a, is a, enough and there's real I guess struggle and real uh, emotion connected to it there's just heart it's got it's got heart you know a story that has some heart is really um, those are the stories that I tend to enjoy the most But I also like it when they're really well thought out. <laughs> so, at any rate, that's something that I teach uh, all my middle school students. Um, and then we do some illustrations. So we create a story using those, uh, those elements. Uh, and then kind of all write it together. And then each person illustrates it. I'm still developing that assignment like as we work on it. I've done it before. Um, I've done it before as a movie making, a filmmaking class, and that's awesome with a small group, but then when you get a really big group, that becomes un untenable. There's nothing you can... You, there are always people that, you know, kind of tune out and don't, don't, fi don't find it as interesting, and if they don't have somebody helping them along, they don't find the reason. They don't they're not always resourceful and making good use of their time and so just the larger the group gets the more the less valuable it is for each individual and so I find it better if each person has a little bit of that personal commitment to their own learning and their own process um, as much as I love group projects um, if I feel like people are just gonna sit back and watch other people do the work I don't like that at all Dinosaur is pouring out the bubble bath, two fisted. Just bubbles galore. So, there may be some 3D bike printing going on, but this dinosaur is just all about. <laughs> I'm not sure how connected uh, these items are. I mean, it is a random quick draw, right? That is the name of it, so. We got the random part for sure. 
That looks like a rock. You do not look like bubbles. Man. Who knew drawing bubbles could be so hard? Oh, yeah. I had said I wanted to do that with my other pen. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to recommit to doing that. Okay. Those table legs. Very interesting. I think that table leg is unrealistic where it's located. I don't think we're going to see a table leg there, friends. I think that's where it is. I think the back corner of this table is going to pretty much hide it right behind there. And I don't normally like to do that in the drawing because you're like, what happened to the fourth leg, man? angle was just right on this particular one. My apologies if anyone is struggling and not being able to see that leg. If I thought about it too long, that would make me struggle too, so I'm not going to think about it too long. Alright, so what's one of the best stories you've ever heard or seen? portrayed in movies or in a book or in a video game. Oh, and speaking of video games, I know, I already told you, I'm way behind the times. I just got Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yes, I know it's been five years since it came out, maybe longer. That's okay. So I just started playing. That is a beautiful game. And I knew it was a beautiful game, and I knew I was going to want it want to play it from the time I saw it five years ago um, but I don't play a lot of video games um, and so I don't I don't have a lot of time to play video games and so it's gonna sound really bad but sixty dollars just seemed like man I don't know if I want to spend sixty dollars am I gonna get sixty dollars worth of enjoyment out of it and this and that and then it went on sale this past week. And I saw it at Target and I was like, wait a second, it's only 40 bucks. That must mean that it's 40 bucks on the Switch store too. And so I came home, I checked it out. Sure enough, limited time only. There were only a couple of days left. I was like, dead. I could not accomplish that. It would look cartoony. It would not have the right vibe at all. And for a time, that bothered me. Like I wanted to be able to do that more gritty stuff. And I just, but it just wasn't in me. Like I just didn't, that's not what was, that's just, I couldn't, I could not uh, enjoy producing it. I could copy things and try to make them look gritty like that but I'm still it wasn't what I was it's not my vision it's not what I see it's not how um, and so Zelda Breath of the Wild has a style that is very much akin to what I love it's beautiful nature the shapes of the trees and the monsters and everything are kind of fun and very, very illustrative in their look. It almost feels like you're in a comic book as you're playing, but like a really beautiful comic book. Um, and I just really, I enjoy that. And then it doesn't feel like there's constant pressure to like survive. Like you... You get to tool around, you get to do some things other than fight enemies all the time. You get to solve puzzles and do some different things that, that really give you different pacing in the game instead of just doing the same thing, only more intense as you go deeper into the game. And I, I'm sure it's going to get more and more intense as it goes, but I said that I was going to use my Micron pen, and I am not, I, then I said I was going to recommit to it. I have not recommitted. And now I've done so many bubbles that are not with my Micron pen, I almost want to give up on the idea altogether. But I will try. Because if this fails, I can always come back. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a better bubble. I mean, wouldn't you agree? It's more round, it's less clunky. Maybe I can get away with drawing enough of these in the picture dispersed around the clunky bubbles that maybe there are clunky bubbles and normal bubbles within the same place. And I'm pretty sure I've never said clunky bubbles before, but that's not a bad name. I play Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe my next character will be clunky bubbles. Maybe not. I got a new session with a new DM coming up this weekend. I'm excited about that because I'm a DM for my home session. Um, we have six players now. We started out with just three. And now we're up to six, which is really fun. And it's a lot of work. And I really enjoy doing the work. We meet every other week if everybody can make it. And sometimes when somebody can't make it, we still play. But even every other week so much to think about and plan out and I'm not using a story I'm homebrewing I've never DM'd before and so that's probably part of what's happening I have pretty much put this on myself um, but I'm so creative that I wanted really badly to make up my own story and I had a story idea in mind and so that's what we're doing and man it's a lot of fun really enjoy it have a great time we laugh oh my goodness do we laugh we get just we get a lot of enjoyment out of it which is I think the whole point so we're probably not playing uh, according to all the rules we're probably not aware of a good number of rules but that's not what it's about for us and so we just have a good time playing Clunky Bubbles is a good name, especially for a dwarf or a fairy, like a maybe like a really strong, I don't know, strong fairy, the other strong fairies, Clunky Bubbles, I don't know, maybe a clumsy, no, Clunky, I don't know. Here, I'm going to take a sip of my beverage. Mmm, tasty. So, that's coffee, but sometimes I have sparkling water. One of my favorite drinks is Red Bull. Mm. I used to sell Red Bull. That was a good job. That taught me a lot about sales because when I was selling Red Bull, it was growing very rapidly as a brand and it was very easy to sell. In fact, sometimes I would walk into stores that didn't have Red Bull yet and they would say, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> That's a fun way to sell. When people want what you're selling and you don't have to convince them that they need it. That's a... <laughs> That's a... That was a pretty cool gig. And it paid pretty well. At the time, they, they did change our, <laughs> our structure after a while because we were doing pretty well. Um, but yeah, we got it under control. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was sweet for some time. here. Little di di dino claws here. There we go. And don't ask me why his bubble bath looks like Elmer's glue. Okay, I don't have a I don't have an answer for that. 
I don't know why the bottles look like they're on their square. That would be a weird bath. Funny drawing. My goodness. Messed up. I think there's supposed to be a bar across the top here. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be attached up there. I don't know. It's so jacked up. I am not a fan of my 3D printer uh, here that I drew. I feel like that's just not great, but oh well. It is what it is, you know? Not everything's going to be perfect. I think I'm gonna draw those tie on in there. I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think I like this line going right across here, going right across here and here. And I think that line is gonna come right across here, right across there. And I think that that might be it, my friends. I think it might be time to erase this guy, maybe. I feel like maybe we need some more bubbly bubbles here and here to just indicate that these are all bubbles. So not to draw every single bubble in there, but I do need some texture to indicate. Whoa, we got lots of bubbles, man. think that's good. We're getting close on time here. We normally like to go no longer than an hour. We've gone a little bit over an hour. Um, that's okay. I'm just going to erase the pencil lines and uh, then turn this in. I'll scan it in, and again, it'll be on the website, mrhin.com. Please make sure to tell your friends. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Uh, 
really, really would uh, like to get this growing a little bit so that other people are actually drawing along with me. I'd like to see your ideas for what a dinosaur 3D printing with a bicycle in a bathroom looks like. I uh, would really like to see your version of that. And uh, there are lots of different ways to draw this, um, lots of different ways to think about it. I This is one tiny idea, uh, but your idea is probably way cooler than mine. So please uh, go to the website, sign up, get uh, download one of these sheets, and uh, play along. And if you uh, upload your drawing to the website, uh, we'll put it in the gallery. And uh, if you don't feel comfortable trying to draw it, just, just download uh, or print one of these out, color it, and upload that, and we'll enter it into the coloring gallery. Um, so uh, we're just trying to get people aware of what we're doing and get some artists together who would uh, enjoy doing these little challenges and having fun. And if we have enough artists, maybe uh, we'll do a Zoom where we could all just be drawing together. Uh, might be kind of fun. I don't know. Or there might be another platform uh, that would be good for this that I don't know about yet. So if you got any ideas, please uh, let me know. And I'm actually going to erase this uh, later because I'm shaking my camera like there's an earthquake. And uh, yeah, but thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great evening and uh, keep drawing.